Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way. Have a seat with me one more time today in the corner booth celebrating our 117th week. Sweeney, clear that floor. Katie, bar the door. Molly, put on another pot of Irish coffee and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. We've got another full house today, not a chair to spare. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, and you can reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. And be sure to check out the written show notes to this podcast and all our other podcasts on, uh, uh, on our blog. You know, we've got podcasts on the Irish in America and on... Uh, uh, Irish song, dance, and recitation, and uh, even a video podcast. So be sure to watch those. And uh, you can also call me at 816 256 3360 and leave your comments on my phone recorder. Uh, try it, you'll like it. Among today's topics, the Irish family name of the week is Waldron, Asians neglected in Northern Ireland, the book of the month is. Missouri Irish, the audio version. Searching Jackson and McDonough. 1911 census corrections. Worldwide Irish pub directory. And Irish webpage of the day, uh, the Milwaukee Irish Fest School. Hey, it's time now for the notes for the week. What's been happening here at the cafe? Well, let me see. I think I'll start it off with this letter. I should have read it a long time ago. I put it in a file, and uh, each week after the podcast, I open that file, and I'll find that letter again. I say, well, I should answer that. You know, I answer a lot of questions on the air, and... Uh, it saves me all that posting it, postage and sending things back when people don't have an email or don't send me their email address. Uh, now, this question was about King James Irish Army List. That's a book I published several years ago and has just loaded with uh, uh, family history uh, of, of Irish family. So uh, it's a good one, and it covers a pretty good time span. It's not just back there in the 17th century. The author... Uh, uh, wrote it in the 1800s and tried to bring family history down that far whenever he could. Uh, but anyway, here's the question. Uh, uh, Dermot Considine from Dublin wrote me and said, uh, the library branch which I attend has two copies of uh, King James Irish Army list and two editions. And he has the original edition and your edition of 1997. Well, my edition of 1997 is a reprint. I think that might have been the original. And then there's an old, uh, he might, there's, there, there was two or three printings of that way back when it first came out, two or three editions. Uh, I know there were two editions, so maybe that older copy is actually uh, uh, not the oldest book, but the sec second edition, edition. Now, he finds that some differences between the two editions, and it's in the list of subscribers. He looks at that for clues, I guess, for genealogical research. And uh, he wants to know, well, how come there's a difference between the subscribers that are listed in each edition? And that's a, that, of course, is uh, uh, easy to explain. It's the subscribers to each edition were different. In other words, when you tried to pre-sell a book back then to get a book going uh, and get some help from people, they'd subscribe to that book, and you'd put your, their name in that book uh, uh, just to show that they had helped that book come out. But you had to order that book before it came out to get your name in there. Uh, so it's different. The first edition was printed, and the people that subscribed to that or bought that in advance were put in that book back in the uh, 1800s. And then when the second edition comes out, a new list of people could be put in there. Uh, sometimes they keep everybody in there and just add some more to it so it looked real good. Uh, but that's the reason. There are two different printings, so uh, that can change. And you'll notice they'll also make uh, corrections when they come out with that second edition. You'll have some uh, uh, changes and some additions and maybe some deletions uh, between the two editions. So it always pays to check when you see there's more than one edition uh, of a book. Keep your eye on it, especially if you're looking for ancestors. Uh, now, he also asked where I might get the address for the uh, said Mr. Considine that was listed in that book. 
Well, that was back in the 1800s, and uh, I don't know where Mr. Considine would have been living. Uh, all I had to go on was the book, just like you, so uh, you might have to go back and uh, do some more research because I sure can't help you on that part. Uh, I hope you find that fellow, and I hope uh, he is either your grandfather or his eldest son. That would sure be a, uh, a nice thing to know and uh, make that book a little more meaningful, wouldn't it? Well, let's move on. What else we got? Uh, hey, you know, we only go to one major festival in, uni in the United States each year. I don't have the time or energy to do many more. And it's almost time for that again. At least we're starting to think about it. And that's the Dublin, Ohio Festival. Uh, that's the first August weekend, I believe. And if you go to that festival, please do stop by. We've been uh, going there for about 10 straight years exhibiting there uh, for those nice people in Dublin. And uh, look for us in the genealogy tent. Well, now here's another one. Uh, a lot of you have asked about some of the folks that are here at the cafe and helped me put this on and uh, uh, serve the lunches and all that. And a lot of you asked about Molly and about her Irish coffee and uh, uh I might get her to come back and talk about her coffee again one time. She did that once before in one of our podcasts. Uh, I don't know if it was this one or the uh, Irish in America series, but she gave her little recipe, and uh, that was interesting. But that's been a year or two ago, and she's a little bit shy right now. But you know what? She's just agreed to narrate our first full-length audiobook, And she's an excellent narrator, and you're going to enjoy her reading of... Uh, Missouri Irish, the original history, and that's the original book that was the Irish Settlers on the American Frontier. Uh, you know, like I said, not only does she read good, she makes that great Irish coffee, and she also plays a mean Irish accordion. Hey, and she's looking for a, n a new Irish accordion because the old one, well, let's just say it's played its better notes and it's just gone. It's just sort of expired. So if anybody has a uh, used Irish accordion out there, that would sure help. Actually, it wouldn't have to be an Irish accordion. I guess there's uh, certain keys that might help. Uh, but we're going to play a little bit of her uh, narration a little bit later in this podcast that will feature, uh, I think I'll pick out something at random. might be a list of uh, Irish names that I had pulled out and uh, made remarks about uh, spelling on in that book, and she had to recite that list as a test. That was our screen test to see if she could do it, and she passed with flying colors and uh of course we're going to have this audio book out by the end of the year we hope and we also hope to have a uh, uh oh well, we actually do have the printed book out now came out with that last year i think it was and it's a goodie folks so uh get one or the other or maybe even both or we're gonna see we're gonna try this audio book thing uh on a lot of our books and see just what happens that way driving into town you can just uh, put that CD into your player, and uh, wouldn't that be interesting? And we may just let you load it, download it directly from our website too. So we got those things uh, coming up. Don't uh, don't give up hope. We got new things coming down the pike. Well, that's our last note's going to be. Uh, oh yes, we had our first sing along session uh, completed uh, last week. Maybe that was two weeks ago. Uh, but I tell you what. Uh, we thought it was uh, over at 7 o'clock, but you know how it is. Some uh, folks were on Irish time, and they showed up late, and we decided to run for another hour, so we just sat down and sang for another hour, and we finished up with a surprisingly good version of Danny Boy. And uh, yes, Danny Boy is a good song, and it's a tune that goes back hundreds of years in Ireland, even though the words might not have been written in Ireland, that's for sure. But it's a song that has stood the test of time and perhaps the most famous of all tunes called Irish. And you know what? We also sang several tunes in Irish uh, at that sing-along, and that was good and talked about a little history connections and the American West and uh, some of the things that come about. And uh, we even, when we got, when we needed a little change of pace, we put a little Amore in there, you know. Uh, uh, when the moon in the sky like a big pizza pie... Uh, and uh, even A Man of Constant Sorrow, we did that for Terry. She said she had a Kentucky connection. So I tell you, all in all, it was a great time, and I sure enjoyed it. And we'd like to thank the Celtic Ranch, that special Irish store, for their grand hospitality. Now we're looking for the next place to hold the Irish Roots Cafe sing-along sessions. 
Any ideas out there? Be sure to give me a buzz or drop me an email. Uh, it'd sure be a lot of fun to keep this thing going. Well, now it's time we just move on to what? The book of the month. Like I mentioned, the book of the month is going to be the audio version of Missouri Irish. And that was the original history of the Irish in Missouri from 1770 to 2008. Now, for you folks on the west, on, on the east coast, you may say 1770 is nothing. But for down here in Missouri, that's way before statehood. And that's, uh, that's when the Indians were here and there weren't any cowboys. So that was way back when. And you'll have to uh, listen into the podcast here I'll, at the end of this uh, little section. I'll play some of the narration from that, maybe just names. We'll see. And uh, you'll hear some of the variations of names that we found. And it covers individuals that settled here from all points east, moving west of the Mississippi River. And, you know, everybody knows that Mac and O can be deleted from or added to an Irish name. But you're all going to so, so gonna find names with M period being used for the prefix Mac or Mick. And uh, this was the first major work I published back in 1984, and I updated it just a year or so ago. Uh, it's close to my heart, and it's a, it's a good piece of work if you're truly interested in history. Uh, and the other state I wrote on, but not quite, well, not at all as extensively, it was on California when I wrote uh, Irish Families on the California Trail. Uh, that's just cracking the surface there on that. But the Missouri Irish book goes into a whole lot more detail and a whole lot more names. Uh, I recently uh, upgraded it, like you said, and, and, and uh, uh, added some things to it and reprinted the book. And there's a lot of early history with genealogy notes and names and locations of the Irish and where they came from before they came here. And uh, particularly in St. Louis, Kansas City, the Irish wilderness and St. Joseph. Hey, and you know that Irish wilderness is a story all unto itself. It's getting more famous as time goes on, I think. Well, we've rambled on enough here, but uh, now I'm going to have Molly just go right ahead and uh, take a sample of her, or her sample reading that she made last week. And uh, here's an example of some of the little little surprises you'll find in that Missouri Irish book, talking about the names that we've, some of the names we found in the Spanish regime west of the Mississippi. Early Spanish documents recorded Irish surnames in the following ways. The Irish surname of Dolan was recorded as Doln, D-O-U-L-N, or Dowlin, D-O-W-L-I-N. The Irish surname of Kavanaugh was recorded as C-A-V-E-N-A-G-H-T-S. The Irish surname of McMullen was recorded as M. Period Mullen, M U L L E N. The Irish surname of Macintosh was recorded as M. Period Kentock, K E N T O C K E. Well, that does it for our, our quick little notes here. And hey, coming up, we've got a place where you can find an Irish pub anywhere in the world. It's a directory online. So no matter where you went, you might feel at home if you find that Irish pub. And then again, if you get in trouble with that sort of thing, you might be able to avoid the street that Irish pub is on because sometimes the attraction is just too much. Hey, you know, now it's what time? It's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. <laughs> Well, number one, new member Brenda Waldron of Oakton, Virginia. Welcome to the club and your County Mayo genealogy and family history notes has shipped. Uh, Richard McDonough of Camarillo, California, your County Sligo book shipped. Patricia Lane of Saratoga, New York, your families of County Cork shipped. Uh, new member Elizabeth Scourin of Bullsburg, Pennsylvania, your families of Cork has shipped as well and welcome uh, number five, Jennifer Lee of Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Your county limerick uh, genealogy book has shipped. And, uh, well, that's been almost two weeks now, so it might just already be there, even though it's Australia. Sometimes it takes seven days. Sometimes it takes four or five. And then once or twice a year, it takes longer than seven days because, because somebody made a mistake somewhere along the line. 
Uh, just remember on those or overseas shipments, be sure to check your uh, door for any notes left by the post office, like come pick this up or we're going to send it back to the shipper. That's a terrible thing to happen. Uh, number six, welcome to new member Carolyn McRoberts of Muskegon, Michigan. Looking for information re regarding uh, Susanna Jackson, born in Carlow County, Ireland in 1845. And the last but not least, number seven, Susan Renzo of Pleasant Valley, New York. Your birth index of Ireland has shipped, and I bet it's even arrived. Uh, that does it for the Magnificent Seven of the day, and it reminds me every time we do this, uh, I want to say thank you to each and every member, each and every p patron who, who's gotten a book, uh, because without you, the podcast wouldn't be possible. These books uh, for the last 30 years that I've been doing wouldn't be possible. And boy, now we're even doing the audio books, and uh, we've got a few other tricks up our sleeves, too, if we can keep things running. But now it's time to move on to... The Irish Family Name of the Day. Well, the name of the day is Waldron. And, of course, that's in honor of our member we just mentioned above. And uh, what kind of spellings do we find for that name? Well, you know, uh, our researchers are spelling it with an O-N at the end of it on Waldron. But you can also have an I-N or an E-N or an A-N. Or that last N, you can double it up and put two N's there. For what reason? We don't know. And we even found spellings like a wall drum instead of wall drun. So you have to be very careful. Uh, now, we'll just give a few notes on the history of the name. We don't have a whole lot of information, but we do have a bunch of sources we're going to note to you in a second. Uh, most of the Waldrons in Ireland are of English extraction, or at least that's what all the sources say. And uh, you can also find several families of the name in the Midlands in Ireland. Uh, and one branch of the Costello family in County Mayo is even said to have assumed the name of Waldron more anciently. So you've got a couple of different families of Waldron that might have settled over here. It would sure pay to find out. And, uh, of course, if you go back to the birth index, the 1890 birth index, which is good for recording births really for the whole century for 99% of the families. And it says the family was most numerous then in Mayo, Roscommon, and Dublin. And we took this information from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. That's the master volume to my 34 book set on Irish families. Uh, we got a book on every county. Now we took a quick look at the Irish Book of Arms, but I'm sorry there were no Waldrons in it. Uh, maybe one day we'll update that and find one of those uh, names given to Waldron, but we sure couldn't, but that's okay. Uh, coming up later in this episode, we're going to talk about the first true Scottish family history center that it opened uh, because, you know, there's a lot of people doing Scottish and Irish or Scots-Irish research, and that might come in real handy for them. But we'll do one last little thing here. Let's take a look at the free master index search of Irish family names. And that's on our web page. And if you click on there, you can find the family name mentioned a whole lot of times. Uh, let's just take seven examples. Lucky seven. Uh, Waldron, with two N's on the end of it, is found in the 1659 Census of Ireland and in the County Armagh Genealogy Book and a few more. Uh, R. Waldron is found in County Cavan and County Limerick and, and count, <laughs> County Cavan and County Leitrim Genealogy Book. There's also a J. Wall drum, and probably just a misspelling. Uh, then there's a T. Waldron in the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters, and an R. Waldron in Names in the Land Grants, and a E. Waldron, and, uh, and a Lady Waldron. You'd want to pay your respects to Lady Alt Waldron, I bet. And she's listed in Pinner's Survey of Ireland. And there's even a Mick Waldron in Irish Names and Surnames. And Waldron is also given in the families of County Galway, Ireland. So there are some sources there you can check. That's just a, a quick little look from a website. And now let's take a look at the websites of the week. Well, everybody's still interested in that Irish Clado ring. You know, you've heard about it, you've seen it, and people are getting it for weddings and whatnot. And, uh, uh, so we thought we'd include that website on here again. 
and its uh, brief history, and they say it's a nationalist version. Uh, so you just take a look at that. We got that off of uh, Diddly Eye on uh, uh, Twitter, I believe, but we've got the link there on the blog. Uh, and uh, number two, the Milwaukee Irish Fest Summer School. Now, it's at, that's at irishfest.com slash schools. And a few other words there. You can click that on our blog or just type in Milwaukee Irish Fest Summer School, and I bet you it's going to come up on in your browser on your computer. And number three, one last shot at Waldron. We found uh, John Waldron biography in the history of Lycoming County, Pennsylvania, 1887. Uh, and we've got a link to that on the blog as well. So that's all pretty interesting stuff. Let's move now to uh, everybody's favorite, our last uh, section of each podcast, or at least it has been lately, Curious News and Notes. Well, here's a few things I just uh, saw in passing and thought I'd put them on there. You might find it interesting. Uh, the 1911 Irish census is going online, but, uh, you know, there's still some, some errors that have to be corrected and that's always the case. You got to remember just because it's online or because it's has the word census, that doesn't mean it's correct, or that doesn't mean they might not update it or make some changes. Uh, I've got a link to that on the blog. Oh, number two, I guess I have to say this, the worst Irish joke I heard on Twitter was from all things noisy. And you no, know, it wasn't patio furniture. That that was my past all-time worst joke I ever heard because I heard it so often. But the new one is, why do people wear shamrocks on St. Patrick's Day? And the answer is, because real rocks are too heavy. I tell you. Number three, Scotland's first real Scottish family history center opens. And that's the Burns Monument Center in Kilmarnock. So I've got a link to that on the blog. That should be uh, of interest to everybody searching uh, uh, Scottish roots or even Scots-Irish roots. You don't know what you might find there. Some connection, either historically, if not uh, specifically for your individual. And number four, find an Irish pub directory uh, that gives pubs anywhere in the world. And you know how many they got? 1,600 or so in the USA, over 800 of them in Ireland. We have more Irish pubs in the USA than in Ireland now. Would that be the correct use of language? I'm not sure. Uh, but there's 659 of them in Europe and 306 of them in Canada. And, uh, and there's more listed, of course, but those are just some of the biggies, so I thought I'd pass it on to you. And that's at uh, irishabroad.com slash pubs. Uh, you can look that up, click it on our blog if you want to. Uh, well, we've got time for what? Two more? Well, we'll do that. We'll try that. Uh, let me see. Why some Asians feel neglected in Northern Ireland? Belfast's main Hindu temple is on the decline. There's an article about that from the BBC. Have a link on the blog. There's also been some other trouble up north there with uh, uh, some of the folks who have, have immigrated into Ireland. Uh, there's been some uh, window breaking and some a few incidents, so... I think this, uh, when the economy gets tight and money starts to get tight, sometimes it puts a stress on society, and that might be happening in this case. But at any rate, there's a story on the Hindu temple. On, uh, click, uh, click on the blog for that. And uh, number six, I just had a quick note. Jenny O'Connell was a blind woman in Dublin, and she had ha had a bad reaction to uh, uh, medicine, which caused the loss of her sight for over 40 years. Uh, but her sight has just been restored, and I think that was from uh, from a surgery of some kind. So uh, that might be look, worth looking up. That's a good story. That's a happy story, and uh, I've got the link to that on the blog. Well, you know what? That brings us to the end of the show. I want you to remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at irishroots.com or send by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe. Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360. Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. Find me on MySpace at Irish Roots Cafe. And find me on Facebook at Mike O'Laughlin. And hey, you can find me on Twitter too. Uh, my handle is Irish Roots Cafe. 
members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Thank <laughs> you.